Welcome back to Elden Ring. In this video, we are going through how every single thing works for multiplayer. So this is going to be an ultimate guide. And just quickly, before we get any further into the video, if you're not currently subbed to the channel, make sure you do sub turn notifications on. If you enjoy the video, don't forget to leave a like. All support is greatly appreciated. And if you want to support me further as a creator, then check out the links in the description. And let's get into it. So the reason I'm making this video is because I have seen a comment after comment on my previous video asking how lots of different things work. So what I'm doing is revisiting, and this is going to be a proper in-depth guide as to how you can do absolutely everything. I'm going to split the video up into three different chapters, so you can click either through the description, or you can just like check out the chapters section on the video. There's going to be co-op, PvP, and then there is going to be the multiplayer items. So this video is going to be focused or based on two people playing co-op. You can play with three, but I'm going to explain the things as though you are playing with just two people. And it does work exactly the same. There is absolutely no difference to get the third player summoned into your game or anything like that. And the thing is, the game is four player multiplayer, but it's only three player co-op. The game will always leave a space open for a PvP invader. Even if you have a password set or anything like that, you can still be invaded. However, when you're playing solo, you will not get invaded unless you initiate it using one of the items. I strongly recommend watching every single part of this video and not skipping through the chapters, just because you might find help with one of the multiplayer items in the co-op section, you also might do it for the PvP, so on and so forth. Because it's an ultimate guide, I recommend watching the entire thing. So in terms of the co-op, the very first thing you're going to want to do is if you open up your options or you open up your menu, you go to multiplayer. Then what you are going to do from here is if you press Y on the Xbox, you can open up the settings. You are then going to set up a multiplayer password. The reason you're going to do this is because if you and a friend set up exactly the same password, when you are looking to summon them, you're not going to see all the other players. So make sure you set up your passwords when you are playing co-op or at least looking to play co-op. So when you first started the game, as soon as you get to Limgrave, you open the door. If you come down here, I mean, we'll touch Grace first. And then down here, so on the east side, you'll see a glow in. If I quickly grab that, you're going to see this. And if we examine it, this is a summoning pool. So you are going to get a small golden effigy. The small golden effigy is an unlimited use item, and if you return to your multiplayer menu, you will see it there. Then what the host will need to do is find a martyr effigy, and that is going to let them summon players. And these are typically found outside boss arenas or dungeons. So what you do is you interact with the martyr effigy to see the people you're able to summon. And if it's set up properly with a password, you should be able to bring your friends in. So you're going to need to use a fell calling finger remedy in order to interact with the martyr effigies. And if you look on screen now, what I'm standing next to is a martyr effigy. They are also known as the summoning pools of Elden Ring. So fell calling finger remedies can be crafted using two Erdleaf flowers. And those are going to be scattered all around Limgrave. Weeping Peninsula, Stormgate, and Leonia of the Lakes. They're bright orangey looking flowers. So if I run around for a moment and try and find one. So if you look here, I've managed to find one. It's taken a little bit of exploration. But you're going to have like an orangey glowing flower. And you pick this up. This is an Erdleaf flower. You need two of these and then you can craft yourself a fell calling finger remedy. So after you've got your hands on two Erdleaf flowers... If you come back to the Church of Ella, this is the first step. As soon as you come into Limgrave, it's the site of grace that's right there. Head north and you go to Church of Ella. When you're here, you're going to want to talk to this dude that's sitting down. And when you've got yourself 300 runes, which you should have straight away, because out the front of the church, if you haven't got it, if we go to the east side of the church, by this pole here, there will be a golden rune level 2. So if we go into our inventory, and we go down here, level 2, if we use that, if you look bottom right, plus 400. So just grab that, you'll have enough. We're going to go in here, we're going to purchase a crafting kit. 
So over on the right hand side it enables the practice of item crafting. So we'll purchase that and now we are able to, if we open up our menu we've got item crafting. You go into here and you can now craft the fell calling finger remedy. All it requires is two earthly flowers and once you consume one of these fell calling finger remedies, if you do it near one of the martyr effigies, you will be able to see all of the golden and the red summoning signs so that you are able to summon your friends in. And remember, they'll typically be found in dungeon areas and just outside boss arenas. So in Elden Ring, co-op is triggered with a goal in mind. It's not for your casual free roam sort of stuff, which is always how From Software have done it. When the host triggers the martyr effigy, that makes the whole thing a mission. So if you take your friend to a boss fight, when that boss is down, your friend will be taken back to their own game. You'll have to then summon them in again. If you take them to a castle or something like that, then once you've defeated the main goal, so if there's a boss in the castle, as soon as you've done that, they return to their own game. If you are just looking to be summoned for co-op by any random player, you can open up the multiplayer menu, and if we go in there, you can use the Tarnished Felled Finger, and you should have the Felled Finger as soon as you start the game. Now, I'm not going to show a map location or anything like that because you are forced to go through this area. So after the Cave of Knowledge, you make your way towards leaving the cave and going up to Limgrave. And just after the Sight of Grace, you will find yourself a Finger Severer and the Tarnished Felled Finger. And unlike the Fell Calling Finger Remedy, this is an unlimited use. So playing with a friend or multiple friends, you'll get separate loot. But you will get loot, so the host could get a sword, the summoned player could get nothing. But you are able to take all your stuff back to your own game if you've been summoned, even including the runes that you've earned. So for an example, if you've seen videos on YouTube of slaying the dragon to get 75k runes, if you jump into a multiplayer game and there are two of you, you go up to the dragon, you're going to get 75k each. Then return to your own games, get the person that was summoned initially to then host and summon the other player. So player one starts hosting player two, you take down the dragon, you grab your 75k runes each, then you back out of the multiplayer game, player two then invites player one, you both go and slay the dragon again, because the dragon's like a one kill per host sort of thing, and you'll both get 75k runes again. So the runes and stuff are shared, you can get loot, but it's all going to be different drops. So if you farm gatefront ruins, one of you could get a shield off an enemy, and one of you might get nothing. If you summon a friend to help you take down a boss, if you beat that boss, your friend is going to then be sent back to their own game, and you're going to have to resummon them when you get to another martyr effigy. If your friend dies during that boss fight, you're going to have to resummon them. But if you as the host dies during that boss fight, both of you will be respawned at the nearest checkpoint. And you are able to join your friends at different parts of the game. You can be 50 levels above your friend or anything like that. But it's going to do some scaling. And if you're not the host, you're not going to make any progress in the game. You're just going to earn your runes and stuff. So what the game will do, well, one of the things it will do to balance it out is it's going to halve the amount of flasks that you are running if you're not the host. And you're not going to be anywhere near as powerful, so you can't just go into some random player's game and power level them. Also, people that have been summoned into games can't interact with NPCs and stuff, so the story can't be ruined for the host. But then, as we'll talk about in the multiplayer items section of the video, there is an item that allows you to boot someone out of your game, or even come out of someone's game that you've been summoned to and return to your own game. And that is pretty much it for the co-op. The same will apply for the PvP and the multiplayer items, but if you have any further questions about co-op, then let me know in the comments and I'll do my very best to research and find out the best way to answer and to try and help you out as much as I can. So in terms of PvP on Elden Ring, you have your standard PvP, then you have jewels. So for the PvP, it's known as invasions. For an invasion, you're going to want to use something called the Bloody Finger. And once you use it from the multiplayer menu, we'll explain how to get it and everything in the item section of the video. But once you have grabbed it, you use it from the multiplayer menu, you will be summoned into another player's game with the task of tracking the player or players down and killing them. There is also an item called Festered Bloody Finger, which is going to be a lot easier to get your hands on, but it's going to be a limited use. The Bloody Finger is unlimited. 
And that your invasion into someone else's world will be unannounced, but NPCs and environmental hazards are still a threat. If your enemy has used something called a white cipher ring, which will also be explained in the item section, they will get the assistance of other players if it's available, so it's your job to annihilate them quickly and don't give other players a chance to help them out. If you are unsuccessful, you can use the bloody finger again and you can be summoned back into their world and you can go back for a round two. So now in terms of duels, if you want to duel with another player, you're going to need to get your hands on an item, which we'll explain in the multiplayer item section of the video. The item, because you might already have it, is called the Duelist Felled Finger. And what you want to do is go into your multiplayer menu and you can use it from there. Duels are used to battle to the death with both players knowing what's going on, unlike the unannounced invasions. So these are more just a battle to the death. It's about the better player, the better stats and all that sort of stuff. You can test your builds this way as well. And now in terms of the final section of the video, the multiplayer items, every single thing related to these items will be explained in this section. So in terms of multiplayer items in Elden Ring, you are going to have things called Cypher Rings. You're going to have a blue one and a white one. These are going to be purchased from the Twin Maiden Husks at the Round Table Hold. So what we're going to do is from the first step, which is where you start the game as soon as you enter Limgrave, you're going to head north past the Church of Ella, you're going to keep going up and then you are going to get yourself to Gatefront. From there, you are going to head west. You're going to come all the way up this path and you're going to head to Stormhill Shack. Then what we're going to do from there is I'm actually going to fast travel and show you guys how to make it to the next section. Because there's a little tip I want to throw in at the same time. So from Stormhill Shack, head north up the main path. And what we're going to do is we're ignoring all combat. So there won't be any combat in the parts I cut. And you're just going to take this dirt path off to the right. So just keep going north. Follow this all the way until you get to the bridge. When you do get to the bridge, go all the way to the end. You're going to see a corpse sat on the edge. You can grab the level 7 warrior's cookbook off that corpse. But make your way down here. Then jump across. And follow this all the way up to the left. Then go through this secret passage. And you just want to follow this until you get to the next site of grace. Which is going to be up here and it's called Lake Facing Cliffs. So as soon as you make it here, you're going to touch Grace, but don't rest. One thing I'd recommend doing, this is going to make you a lot stronger, especially early game. I say a lot stronger. It's going to improve your survivability. But come down into this church, and in front of this statue, you'll have an item. There's a vendor on the right-hand side, but you will have an item that's sat there, and it's called the Sacred Tear, or it's a Sacred Tear. So grab that. And then what you're going to do is head back up to the site of Grace. And once you interact with it, you're going to be chucked into a cutscene. When you've got the Sacred Tear, so you'll have to do this at the Round Table Hold because you can't rest here the first time you use this site of Grace. You're going instantly into the cutscene. But if you go down to your flasks and you increase amount replenished by the flasks, you can use the Sacred Tear to do so. And what that's going to do is put a plus one next to your flasks. So my flask of Crimson Tears is plus one. It's going to do it with all of them. And basically it makes it more powerful. So for an example, if you were to regain a 500 HP from using a Crimson Tear flask, you'll now gain like 550 or something like that. And that happens for every single flask you ever have in the game. And you can grab yourself way more than one Sacred Tear. I did an overpowered guide for like early in the game. And we got our flasks straight up to level 2 on another character for me. And for a long time after you start the game, you're going to be able to fully heal up from pretty much no health back to max with the plus 2 flasks. And for those of you that don't know once you have encountered the round table hold, at the very bottom left you're going to be able to travel there. It's called the Table of Lost Grace. And I also saw comments of people getting stuck in there and not knowing how to get back out. You just fast travel back out. So I'm going to fast travel to the Table of Lost Grace and I'll see you guys there. So when you enter the Round Table Hold, this is the Site of Grace or the Table of Lost Grace that you'll interact with to use your Sacred Tear from that church. But coming around to the left hand side, you are going to see a doorway here. And if you go through, you interact or you talk and then you go to Purchase. This is the Twin Maiden Husks. And for a thousand runes each, you now have the ability to purchase the white and the blue cipher rings. 
So the blue one is going to put you in a ready state to answer calls for help from other players in PvP that are facing invaders. The white cipher ring will request help from other players if you get invaded. So if you've enabled PvP invasions and someone comes in unannounced, the game is going to call for help to players that are willing to jump in and support your defense against an invader. So as soon as you purchase this, use it straight away and then at any point if you are invaded, help can come your way. So we spoke about this in the co-op section of the video, an item called Fell Calling Finger Remedy. This will reveal summoning signs and martyr effigies to initiate multiplayer features. These can be crafted by using two Erdly flowers, and those flowers can be found in Limgrave, Weeping Peninsula, Stormgate and Leonia of the Lakes. They have an orangey sort of glow to them, so they shouldn't be too hard to find. So grab yourself two, go to the Church of Ella, interact with that vendor, purchase a crafting kit for 300 runes, you can pop out the front of the church, you can grab yourself a golden rune level 2 which will give you 400 runes, purchase that crafting kit, pause the game, open up your crafting menu, if you've got two earthly flowers you can craft yourself a fell calling finger remedy. Then we have finger severer, this can be used from the multiplayer menu, it's going to be found at the very start of the game before you even reach Limgrave. So I'm not going to show a map location or anything like that, you're forced to make your way past this item. What you want to do with this item is go into your multiplayer menu, you can use it from there. If you are the host of a multiplayer game, you can use it to send someone back to their own game. But if you've been summoned, you can use it to return to your own game. So basically it's to leave a multiplayer session or kick someone out. Then we have the Tarnished Felled Finger, and that creates a co-op summoning sign, so the players can summon you to their game. This is going to be found alongside the Finger Severer, so it's at the very start of the game before you even reach Limgrave. Then we have Duelist Felled Finger, which needs to be obtained from a corpse to the north of Stormhill. So, from Stormhill Shack, which is just west of Gatefront, the first steps so as soon as you spawn into Limgrave, or make your way to Limgrave, head north, go up to Gatefront, then go west all the way along until you get to Stormhill Shack. Then what we're doing is heading northeast all the way over to my beacon, so I'll see you guys when we get there. So as soon as you get to this place, you're going to be invaded. Then once you have defeated the invader, we are going to be awarded a Fell Calling Finger Remedy. You are also going to get the Hammer Talisman. But then up here on the corpse, if you pillage the remains, you are going to get your hands on a small red effigy. You are also going to be awarded a Duelist Felled Finger. And that is what's needed to make a sign appear in other players' games so that you can summon them for a duel. And all you have to do for that one is go into your multiplayer menu. You can use it from there. So next we are back at Stormhill Shack and this item is the Bloody Finger. This is used to attempt an invasion on someone else's world and with this you need to do a full on quest in order to obtain it. So the very first thing you're going to want to do is from Stormhill Shack which is over to the northwest of Gatefront. You're going to head along this road here so come all the way around, follow it and then when you get through roughly to around here this sort of area you're going to take on your first like main boss. So it's progression with the game. And this boss is called Godric, so you'll know if you're taking down the right enemy. But what we're going to do is travel to Rose Church after we have taken down Godric. Fucking yes! Thank you! So, after you have defeated Godric, what you're going to do, if we have another look at Stormhill Shack, Coming all the way round and you get to lake facing cliffs. What you're going to do is keep heading northeast. You're going to come to Folly on the Lake. And then you're going to head north from there and come over to Rose Church. Okay, so when you head over to Rose Church, you are going to see an NPC. This is the person that's right next to the site of grace at the first step. So if we go all the way back down here on the map, at the first step, as soon as you get into Limgrave, he's going to be standing there. Make sure you talk to him. Then after you've defeated Godric and you've gone to the round table hold, he's going to spawn up here at Rose Church. So what you're going to do at this point is speak to him, and he's going to ask you to invade players 
So if you choose the top option in the dialogue, he's going to give you five festering of bloody fingers. So this is going to let you invade someone else's game. You have to go into PvP and invade players three times, then come back to this spot and talk to this guy again. So I'm going to go and invade three people, then we'll be back. Okay, so I defeated the person because they killed themselves. They jumped over the edge. But I followed, and yeah, I died. <laughs> I, I think I still got the rune arc, but that's probably one of the funnier PvP moments you'll see. Oh, there you go. The person that I come in here to host vanquished. There you go, didn't even have to do anything. They got taken out by a dragon. Oh, it's the weirdest PvP you're ever going to see. Very nicely done. I got my ass handed to me. GG's to that player. Okay, I've now invaded three other players, so I'm going to talk to this person again. So pleased you're here. The dialogue has changed. And then what we're going to do is be anointed. Lord of Blood's favour. So we've basically been given a cloth we need to wipe it with the blood of a maiden. If you kill this guy at the very beginning, because I have done it with another character, I'm not sure what to do at this step. So what you're going to do after the guy tells you to kill a maiden is from Rose Church, you're going to head northwest all the way up to Temple Quarter, grab yourself that site of grace, then keep heading northwest up to here, so we're going to touch grace, and then we're going to rest quickly. This is Foot of the Four Belfries. So we're going to follow the main road, or the dirt path, northeast. So when you get to the Four Belfries, you're going to look for the tallest one. So in the very top one, you're going to get an imbued sword key. And it's right where my marker is. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to tell. So what you're going to do from the one at the very top where you open the chest. So if we quickly run back up here and like basically you're on the northwest side at the very, very top. You've got the chest, you get the key. Then the two that stand roughly the same sort of height go to the one that's on the far east. And we are going to put in our sword key. Now we're going to examine, we're going to travel to another location. So you will come to the Chapel of Anticipation, and this place might look a little bit familiar. What we're going to do is traverse the mist, and here we go, back with the tutorial boss. And there we go, boss down. I didn't even use a flask, and I'm shit at this game. So it's got an ornamental straight sword, and a golden beast crest shield. So now we've defeated that boss, I'm going to pop a flask just in case. What we're going to do is go back up to where you actually start the game. Go all the way up the stairs that you first come down. And go inside this door. So here is the Dead Maiden, and this is actually where you get the finger from. Where you can write all the messages at the beginning of the game. So now we have Lord of Blood's favour, and we have dyed it with the blood. Now what we're going to do from here is we are going to head back over to Rose Church. Then if we come back out the front, the dude's going to be standing here. Talk again. And after completing the final trial, what's going to happen is... If we offer a finger... Okay, that's really hurting. <laughs> There's some crazy stuff. But we have a bloody finger. You can invade another player, do PvP an unlimited amount of times. And now we have a look at the festering bloody finger. And I've already explained this one's exactly the same as the bloody finger, but it's a limited use one if you don't want to go through all that quest and everything like that. So what you're going to do for this one is back at the very beginning, just so you guys don't get lost or anything like that. You've got the first step, then you've got gate front, and from here, you go southeast, you go across the bridge, 
So, from Gatefront Ruins, across this bridge down here, down to Waypoint Ruin Cellar. So now, what we're going to do is head down to here. So, from the Waypoint Ruin Cellar, it's just pretty much straight east. However, this is a massive cliff. So I'd either try and find a way down this way, or I would just go north and follow the road round. And over here, in the forest, so exactly where my marker is, if I zoom out, you can see that it's a little bit up and east. So if I just, I leave the map there for a second, you guys can screenshot or whatever you need to do. Just sell for the big tree. You're going to see this guy here. And if you talk, this is a vendor. He only has five. These are limited. So whilst you can use them, whilst you have them, you're going to need to find different vendors in the game if you don't want to do the massive quest to get the bloody finger. So the festering bloody fingers are a thousand runes each, and you can only buy five of them off this guy. But that's one of the vendors, the quickest one to get to. And as I said, the festering bloody finger does exactly the same thing as the bloody finger, it's just a limited use. They are going to let you invade another player's game. So it's PvP, it will be unannounced, so they won't have a clue you're in there. You just jump in, track them, kill them, you're done. Either that or they kill you, you can go back in there and try again, or move on. Next up is the Taunter's Tongue. The Taunter's Tongue is going to beckon bloody fingers to come and invade your world. And this allows you to be invaded even without a Felled Finger Cooperator present. So even if there's no one in your game, if you're playing solo, people can still come and invade you. So you're basically taunting the world and saying, look, come get me. It opens you up for invasion. So even if you're playing by yourself, people can still come and invade you. It's also going to allow a second invader to join the invasion, so you can end up in a 2v1 situation. But to get your hands on the Taunted Tongue, if you come to the round table hold, and you go through the middle archway, and you jump off the balcony, so we're just going to jump straight down, and then if you start making your way towards the door, you're going to get invaded. So there we go, Mad Tongue Alberic. Oh my god, it's taken me about half an hour, but I've done him. I did him! So you're going to get a full calling finger remedy for free. You are also going to get the Taunter's Tongue. So if you use this item when you're playing solo, people can still invade you. They can even do 2v1. And what we do after that is we head here and return to the entrance. Now making our way back to Limgrave, the first step. Just over here, when you interact with this summoning pool you're going to be awarded a golden effigy. If you then step away and you go into multiplayer, you can see that we have a small golden effigy. This is unlimited use. And it's going to send a summoning sign to several nearby pools that are activated. So if you are summoned, you'll be transported to that summoning pool's location in the host player's world, and multiplayer will begin. So this is to give you the ability to let other players summon you into their game. And last but not least, the small red effigy. These are going to do the same thing as the golden one, except they are for PvP. So it's going to send a competitive summon sign to several nearby summoning pools. In order to get your hands on the small red effigy, what we need to do is we need to open up our map and we need to go to Stormhill Shack. What we're going to do from Stormhill Shack is head northeast. This is where we're going, to where my beacon is. So Stormhill Shack's down here, we are going up here. And I showed this for the Duelist Feld Finger because it's in exactly the same place. But I'll take you guys to it again, just if you've skipped all that and come right to the end of the video for whatever reason. So carry on, you're going to see there's like a massive castle looking building thing in the distance. When you get towards these doors, you are going to be invaded by an NPC. They're a lot easier than the one at Round Table Hold. So this corpse... If you interact, like there's going to be basically loot on that corpse. That loot is going to contain the Duelist's Felled Finger, and it's also going to contain the Small Red Effigy, so you can be summoned into PvP games. So that was a look at every single multiplayer item, co-op, PvP, and the dueling side of PvP as well in Elden Ring. That's taken a little under four hours to record, so I really, really hope it helps you guys out. 
If you do need any further help with anything, leave a comment down below. And if I don't reply to it, I'm sure someone will. And we will do our best to get everyone understanding all the different multiplayer functions of Elden Ring. And on that note, we're going to leave the video there. Let me know your thoughts and stuff in the comments. And I'll see you in the next one. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Yeah.